Hi, Dr. P here to talk about a topic that's long enough for me to split it in two parts. Another of the confusions of game design. Game design is not mind control. So why am I doing this topic? Well, the title comes from a recording of a talk of a past Gen Con. Game design is mind control. I have to confess I never got past the first few minutes and that may be because the title is absolutely the opposite of how I think about tabletop games. Now in single player video games the mind control idea makes somewhat more sense though in video games there's a lot of disagreement about which way to go the very linear way or open world closed versus open. Then I attended a live presentation at a convention recently and essentially the speaker wanted to tell beginning designers to get rid of anything that doesn't con contribute to the core loop of a game. And this is usually good advice. Don't put anything in there that doesn't contribute to the core activity of the game that is enjoyable for the target market. But English isn't his first language, although you'd never know it, but it turned up in his use of the word manipulate. Now this sounds way too much like control or even mind control and got quite a negative reaction from some listeners, especially one. And the speaker, when he later found out exactly what manipulate means, he decided to use a different word such as imp influence. Manipulate, the meaning that really is negative. Control or influence a person or situation cleverly, unfairly, or unscrupulously. And that's what many people think of when they hear, hear the word manipulate in conjunction with people. Now the speaker also has an engineering background so naturally as engineers do he focused on elements he could control. Uh, many engineers tend to neglect the human component, not all, but even design engineers who ought to know better or people who design things often neglect the human component. Engineers also are taught to te think in scientific or at least highly logical ways where most people think of game design as an art. To me, game design is 90% science and 10% art, but that 10% is very important, especially in these days in video games of the soulless design by metric. Manipulation or mind control implies passivity. Are you making a movie rather than a game? Games are active. They're about doing and thinking. Why would we want the game players to be passive? The traditional notions in games, and I mean serious games, not party games or family games, is to put players on the horns of a dilemma where they have to do things, but they can't do nearly all the things that they want to do. They have to decide. Traditionally, two choices, you can do one. When I design a game, I want to give players significant choices, not lead them by the hand where I want them to go. And that essentially is the divide here between mind control and not. Another way of expressing this notion of mind control is to say that you want to make a game addictive. Addiction is bad. People don't want to be addicted it indicates a loss of control by the person who is addicted. Why would a decent person want to get anyone addicted? Is that something you want to do to other people? Do you want to treat people that way? I certainly don't. Would you like to be treated that way as someone to become addicted to a game? Perhaps if you have an addictive personality you wouldn't mind, but I'm the opposite and I mind a great deal. There's a general principle here. It's the golden rule in some form. And I use Immanuel Kant's rationalist, non-religious version, which is treat no man or no person as a means to an end, but as an end only. Treat no man as a means to an end, but as an end only. So I think game designers have to treat players as ends, not means. 
And of course, if you think about other things related to that, in publishing, for example, good customer service treats people as ends, not means. But a lot of places don't understand that, and that's why bad customer service is endemic these days. Mind control is the opposite of this golden rule. It treats people as mere means to your end, whether that's addiction or something else. Mind control doesn't treat people as ends. We'll talk more about this in part two, and also consider when mind control might make sense.